it's it's and I'm going to show you a graph that shows that the that aid in terms of overseas development aid has actually been declining over the last decade or so. And, and for citizens in other countries to struggle that Africa needs more is missing the point. The point is, to what extent does any African country control the terms of investment in that country? If you don't control the terms of investment, then others determine that for you. And if you give people more aid, and all that they do is sign further contracts with the same controllers of investment. And accountants and consultants and others get the benefit of that. So it's aid for the agencies of the very people who control it, investment at the moment. That Africa needs to be more integrated into world marks. I, I think my colleague Stephen has just mentioned that probably one of the continents that's most integrated into world markets in terms of percentage of imports and exports is Africa. So the idea that we need to be more integrated is a false one. Uh, in fact, Africa could probably do with a little bit of selective, uh, I won't say. <laughs> that Africa needs good governance. Um, and again, this plays to the image of corruption. And I mean, I heard the minister refer to corruption. You know, Swedish companies, would, they'd like to help, but they keep finding the corruption amongst the Africans. That makes it difficult for Swedish companies because the Africans are so corrupt. There's something incredibly patronizing about that. Okay? And the problem is that every time there's been an attempt at a decent African government, it gets overthrown by those same foreign and imperial forces that have destabilized Africa for so long. So that every time there's an attempt, a genuine attempt on some African government, to really be accountable to its people, it gets destabilized. It's not a question of needing good governance. It's actually a question of having the space to practice the good governance that could have been there all along. And I think sometimes people just need to remember real history here. That Africa needs a development plan. Um, again, I mean to show that we've had internally generated development plans for decades. You know. Africa is awash with development plans. We're tired of development plans. Um, this idea that you just don't know what you're doing, again, underpins that. And I think there's something terribly wrong with that. That Africa needs fair trade. I'm, I'm going to maybe differ a little bit with my colleagues here. And that to say that the thing has been posed between free trade and fair trade is still to seek the, the you know, we're seeking the sort of, the causes somewhere else. If we, if we had fair trade in a sense that coffee growers in Africa were genuinely able to compete with, uh, with the EU and that the EU were to do away with its common agricultural uh, uh, policy and genuinely allow its produce to be sold at real prices, I think it would be a matter of time before the same situation replicate itself. Because unless you can control capital, unless you can control investment, unless you can regulate it and say for what are things being invested, who gets the apportionment and the shares of investment, etc., you replicate the same division of labor that exists in the world. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a critic of, of that. I think sometimes it's a, a place to a healthy impulse of solidarity, but I don't, don't think it goes far enough. <coughs> 